Hey guys, it's Lance at Mac Sound Solutions, and a couple of nights ago I installed Windows 11 on my Mac Pro 5.1 successfully. Uh, my Mac Pro is running Martin Lowe's Open Core Package 0.8.6 and Monterey 12.6.2, and I already had Windows 10 running. You have to boot into Windows to be able to do this install. So if you don't have Windows already, you gotta either install Parallels or some kind of virtual machine and get Windows running, or go over to a buddy's house that has Windows and create your USB thumb drive. That's all you need is a USB thumb drive. And I use a software utility called Rufus. I'll leave the link in the description. And what Rufus did for me was patch the OS so it installs it on unsupported machines, including Windows machines. So the Mac Pro will tell you if you're trying to install Windows without using Rufus, it's gonna give you an error and not allow you to install it saying it's an unsupported computer. Rufus takes care of that for you. Now I know there's a way to go into Windows and make some changes somewhere in the installer itself, but Rufus is easier. So I went with Rufus and it just worked. It did take about three hours though, super long install, and maybe that's because I was doing it via USB 2. So I did the install with the built-in USB 2 port on the Mac Pro. I'm not sure if it would work using a PCIe slot, uh, say, you know, a USB 3.0, a PCIe card because it just might not get recognized in the install process because you don't have the driver installed in Windows yet. So I'm not sure that would work. It might, but um, I did it using the built-in ports, which definitely get recognized by the installer and by OpenCore. So the other thing to note is never take out your open core drive when you're doing the install for Windows. You can brick your Mac. So you gotta have open core installed and you do not want to remove it to do the Windows install. It might seem like a logical thing to do and some people say you should do that. Absolutely do not do that. You can brick your Mac. What happens is you boot into Windows without the protection of open core and it can corrupt your boot ROM permanently so that you can never boot into Mac OS again or never even boot the computer again. Keep your open core drive in there at all times. And I have my open core drive installed in Bay 1. That gives you the quickest boot times. You can have your OS wherever you want it, but for the quickest boot times, it's best to have it in SATA Bay 1. I bought one of those OWC drive sleds for an SSD, which fits into the SATA Bay. And honestly, the boot times in Windows is faster than Mac OS on my NVMe, which is surprising because it's, it's slower by quite a bit, but it boots super fast. So let's get to the install process. So download the latest version of Rufus. The link is in the description. And then you want to run Rufus. And uh, you can download the Windows ISO, the installer, right from Rufus. You don't have to go over to Microsoft. You can do it right within the app. And you want to save the ISO to your desktop on your PC. You do not want to save it onto the thumb drive. It will let you save it there, but you're going to be reformatting the thumb drive in NTFS. Uh, Rufus is going to do that for you. But if you put the ISO on the thumb drive, it's going to reformat the drive and you're going to get an error. So you want to save the ISO onto your desktop. The installer is about five plus gigs, so we're just gonna speed this up. And starting off with the settings at the top, the device, you can see that uh, Rufus has chosen my USB thumb drive, and uh, you wanna make sure that is the selected device because you will be reformatting whatever drive is selected up there. So make sure it's your USB thumb drive. And you want a standard Windows installation, GPT partition, and for target system, you want UEFI non-CSM. You know, in the old days, we would use Bootcamp. And Bootcamp only works with legacy installs of Windows. But we're using OpenCore, which only works with UEFI installs of Windows. So you want to have it set to GPT UEFI non-CSM, as in non-legacy. And there's no reason to install Bootcamp drivers. So you can relabel your thumb drive if you want to when you reformat it when you first hit start. So I just called it Windows 11 installer. And then we hit start. 
which is going to completely erase whatever is on the thumb drive. Hence why you don't want to put your Windows ISO on the thumb drive in the very beginning of this process. You want to put it on your desktop. So then we hit the start button and this window comes up and I basically have all these checkboxes checked. You definitely have to have the first checkbox checked or it will not install Windows 11 because the secure boot and TPM 2.0 removal is what allows the install to happen on the Mac Pro because it's not a supported Intel machine and the rest are pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to hit OK and it's going to check for conflicting processes and when everything is good you're going to get a little warning saying you're going to completely erase the thumb drive and you're going to say OK I'm ready to go and it's going to format the thumb drive, it's going to reformat it in NTFS, which is what Windows bootable drives have to be formatted in. And now it's copying the ISO from the desktop onto the thumb drive. And I sped this way up. One thing to note is when it's done, it just goes back to saying start. It doesn't really tell you you're completed. It just looks like, hey, we're ready to do it all over again. So just understand that when you're done there, you just hit close and you're finished and your thumb drive has been created by Rufus. So now we're going to quit Rufus. So we'll just have a quick look in Windows and see that our thumb drive is successfully finished. So there it is, Windows 11 installer, everything looks right. And now we're going to reboot and get back to the open core boot picker. So we boot it up into the open core boot picker and we're going to arrow over to the UEFI NTFS thumb drive, which is the yellow one on the right. And as you can see, we're now booting into the Windows installer. And I'll speed this up a bit so we get to the next window. And here you pick your country and your language and your keyboard configuration. And you hit next. And we're at the install now window. Here we are, the setup is starting. And the next thing it's going to ask you to do is put in your activation key, but you can just skip this. I don't have a product key. And actually Rufus is going to make it so it works without having to enter a product key. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to pick your version of Windows that you want to install. I picked Windows 11 Pro. So the next window, sorry for my shaky camera work, but I couldn't screen capture this. You're going to be asked whether you want to update your current Windows operating system or do a custom install and install it on a new drive. So I went with custom install. I'm doing a completely clean install of Windows 11. And this is why you should have as few drives in your computer as possible when you're doing this because you don't want to make the mistake and erase a drive and they're not labeled well. Uh, I don't know why Windows is doing this, but it shows you the EFI of the drive and it shows you the partitions, but it doesn't give you any naming schemes. So in other words, like Macintosh HD. So it's a little confusing and a little scary because you're going to be reformatting a drive, right? So you want to make sure you're reformatting the right drive. Um, but after looking at this for a bit now, I can tell that drive zero is actually SATA Bay one in the Mac Pro, the furthest on the left. And then drive one is my one terabyte. You can see it says 931 gigs because the EFI is using up a little bit of the space. Um, that is in SATA Bay 2. So Windows calls it drive one. For me, it's SATA Bay 2. So that is the one that I'm going to be reformatting to install Windows on. You can also see that I have a drive four. Well, how can that be when there's only four SATA bays? Zero, one, two, and three. Well, drive four is my NVMe, my PCIe card with an NVMe on it, which I partitioned into two partitions. I have a 500 gig, which has Monterey on it, and then I have a one and a half terabyte for a scratch disk. And it's a little surprising that Windows shows these drives because they're formatted in APFS. But that totally means you can go in there and wipe your Mac OS drive by mistake or one of your other APFS formatted drives. So you have to be very careful here. You got to have all your data backed up. And I would highly recommend not having any drives in the Mac Pro except the ones you need, which is your open core drive and 
the drive you want to install Windows on. So now we're going to hit next and move on to the next step. This is going to erase the drive and format it in NTFS and start installing Windows 11. Now this comes up on the screen. Your PC will restart several times. Well, what does that mean? That means you have to babysit this process and it took almost two hours for me. You know, it's being done over USB 2 because I'm using the built-in Mac Pro's USB 2 port with a thumb drive. So you have to wait and sit there and whenever the computer reboots back into the open core boot picker, you don't want it booting back into Mac OS. So you can't just walk away and come back. You have to babysit it and it took several reboots and then finally it booted off the new drive and voila, Windows 11 was installed. So here's the old girl running Windows 11 and I gotta say it is extremely perky. It boots super fast, faster than Mac OS. Everything loads just very quickly even though it's just on a SATA SSD. It's not even on an NVMe. But you know my Mac OS is on an NVMe and it boots slower than Windows 11 on a SATA running at about you know 250 300 megabytes per second so uh, yeah I'm very happy with the install in my next video I'll put up some gaming benchmarks running in Windows 11 thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel give me that thumbs up and I'll see you on the next Mac Sound Solutions video